Hey players, if you want to improve your game, you want to watch this video because we are looking at the game of Joel Embiid. And in each clip, I'm going to give you one to two pointers that you can add to your training and implement into your game to make you a better player. So watch till the end. There might be one, two, or three things you pick up and you can see results in your game. I also have a training platform that's in the first link below. You can create a free account and get free workouts free drills, free skill breakdowns, some more film studies similar to this, and it'll really help your game. But in this video, let's go ahead and start looking at the game of Joel Embiid, break it down and see what we can add to your game. Now, as we're looking at five clips of Joel Embiid, keep in mind that this blue box up here, these are just the overarching themes that I'm talking about here in this video. And then the lesson, this down here is going to correspond to each clip. So my goal for each clip, I want you to be able to watch each clip and then learn something, just one thing per clip that you can add to your game. So let's watch this first clip against the Pelicans. So what Joel Embiid did there, he set a cross screen. So you got a cutter cutting across the paint. And then what he's gonna do is cut off of a double down screen type of thing. Okay, he has a really good shot fake, another shot fake, and then he knocks down the shot. So what I want players you to take away from this position is think about how much work goes into getting open. A lot of players, you just assume, I'm just gonna end up wide open magically somehow and get a wide open shot. That's not gonna happen. You need to take away the lesson that you have to work to get open and you have to work to create scoring opportunities before you catch the ball. Sometimes you're gonna be wide open, but that's rarely gonna happen. So that's the thing to take away from this clip, work to get open. And then a couple other things is just notice how good Joel Embiid shot fakes are. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about this in the video, but on your shot fakes, they need to look exactly like your shot. Like if we were, if we did not see this clip beforehand and we just picked up the clip right here and was watching Joel Embiid as I'm going slow motion here, we would think because of how his body is set up where his feet are, his feet placement, you would think that he is actually gonna shoot this shot. A lot of you players, your shot fake looks like you're having a muscle spasm and it's really not effective and it doesn't work. So your shot fakes need to look exactly like your shot. So now we're gonna keep it rolling, go into this second clip here. And this is exactly what I'm talking about again. Your shot fake has to look exactly like your shot. So if we go back again, he catches it in the high post. Right there, it looks exactly like his shot. The basketball is right in his shot pocket. It's right in front of his forehead. His feet are set, his body is aligned, and maybe most importantly, players, on your shot fake, if your eyes don't go up to the rim, I think it's rarely ever gonna work. I think the most important thing on your shot fake is that your eyes get big, your eyes go to the rim, and then the defender will actually believe that you're gonna shoot it instead of like you're having a convulsion, which I've coached a lot of players, that's what a lot of them look like. And you're noticing too, he's also always under control, and the best players are always under control. They're not just full speed all the time. They're able to slow down. They're able to be deliberate with their shot fakes, with their jabs, with their screening, all that sort of stuff. Now, when in this clip right here, it's a it's a kind of a in transition almost, although the defense is set. It's just a ball screen at the top and then a short roll to the foul line area. Now, on this short roll, the defense is back into the paint. So you can see Cantor right here. Cantor does not step up to defend Joel Embiid. So because he's back, Embiid makes the right read to go for the jump shot. But the one thing I want you to take away from this video is notice the spacing. Um, you have three players outside the three-point line, and then you have Tybal right here, who is on the opposite side of the floor, so still giving some good space. Because there is such good spacing, Look at how spaced out the team is. Joel Embiid has space, and because he has space, that ha that gives him time to play the game. Players, if you're all jumbled up and you're two to five feet away from a teammate, that's not gonna work. It's going to give the defense an advantage, and it's going to speed up the game in your head, which is not good. So good spacing allows players and the team to slow down, make good decisions, and be more deliberate. Now, another thing here, is similar to what we just talked about, and it's a very similar action. So it was this um, ball screen right here, early in the possession, 
high ball screen, and it looks like Maxi set a screen first and then went for a flare, and then Embiid followed with a ball screen. So on this ball screen right here, you have Vucevic, who is defending Embiid, of course, and he is going to retreat into the paint first. Now, the screener's defender, what they could do is they could hedge like this or contain the ball and then sprint kind of in a straight line to the screener. But in this situation, Vucevic decides to sink down and defend the drive first instead of just closing out for the three-point shot. So Embiid looks to attack right here, and he notices on that attack, Vucevic is defending the drive. Vucevic, the defender, is backing up. So because he's backing up, Embiid makes the right read and still makes the right play. So players, the lesson here is don't predetermine what you're going to do. Don't decide when I catch it, I'm automatically going to do this. Now, I will say there are some times before you catch the ball, you might be looking to your right and you see a teammate is going to be wide open to your right. You might catch the ball coming this way and make an immediate pass, or you might see that a driving lane is going to be absolutely wide open. There are some times where you can decide what you're going to do before you catch it, but against great defenders, you're going to have to read how they are defending you. And then another thing, and I'm kind of adding more in here than originally planned, but that's fine. When you're working on your jump shot, you want to be make, making sure that you're working on your jump shot against contesting defenders. It's, you know, it's good and it's fine, and you definitely should work on your jump shot, work on your form shooting, you know, at least 100 shots a game, or 100 shots of practice, I think, or a workout should be 100, uh, at least 100 form shots. But then as you go into full speed shooting, catch and shoot off the dribble, stuff like that, try to add a defender in to where they're contesting your shot as well, because um, in a game, this is what's going to happen. If you're playing a good defender, they're going to contest your shot, and you need to work on shooting against those defenders too. And if you want to learn a lot more about shooting, just go to my training platform. It's linked below. I've got some free content, and then the paid content is really, really good as well that will help you become a better shooter. Now we're looking at a post feed, and this is a, the fourth point right here, scoring from all three levels. What makes Joel Embiid such a great player? Oops. What makes Joel Embiid such a great player? And this is what all great scorers have in common. They can score from three levels. They can score from the three-point line, they can score from the mid-range, and they can finish and score in the paint slash around the rim. So right here, notice the spacing again as well. It's a post feed, and you have four offensive players all, well, Tybal's just one or two steps inside the three-point line. But you have all players outside the three or almost right at the three-point line. This gives Joel Embiid space and time to read the defense and make a decision. Then he's very much under control on his jab, and he's very balanced, and he's very patient. Look at the speed. So he's kind of... He's kind of lulling the defender to sleep. He's kind of going slow. And then his jab is fast and violent. Players, when you're working on your jab um, or even dribble moves or shot fakes, you got to be able to go from kind of slow and casual but still protecting the ball to a fast jab or a fast shot fake. And then you're just playing out of different speeds. If you can play out of those different speeds and paces, you're going to be much more difficult to guard. So that was five clips of Joel Embiid players. I hope you took away some things that you can add to your game. If you're looking for advanced training, go ahead and click that first link below. I've got a training platform that'll be really helpful for you. And also make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this that'll hopefully help you improve as a player. Thanks for watching. Let's keep getting better.